Hello and welcome to Trolls of the Two Tom Bridges or T O Triple T P. My name is John and I will be your Percival Silverlight today. Remember, you can find us on all of the social medias on T O Triple T B podcast. And if you're feeling particularly generous, leave us a review somewhere because that helps spread the word and it allows other people to find the podcast. Unless you're just leaving a review on a public toilet bathroom wall, then some people might not see that. Apple iTunes, Google reviews, anything like that. Uh, Like I said, anything helps and we always appreciate it. And of course, we do also have our recently released refresher on everything that's been happening so far up to episode 37. It's a great place to remind yourself of what happened so far. And as well as that, if you're just starting out, you can avoid all of our stupid audio issues at the start. Hooray! Obviously, there's plenty for the party to be getting on with this week. But what will we decide to do first? No doubt it will involve some adventure. The Log of Percival Silverlight Morning breaks over Port Nianzaru. The all-clear has been given for the undead incursion, and life in the streets seems to be getting back to normal. Our employer, Sindra Sylvain, however, is suffering greatly from the effects of this death curse. Her health is obviously failing, her skin awash with sores that look like burns. She claims that there is little to be done to ease her suffering, other than finding and destroying the soulmonger. There are many things that need to be dealt with whilst we are at Port Nianzaru, least of which is what to do with all these damn sandwiches. Adventure! You guys are free now, unless there's anything else you want to do at Wakanga's just now. Uh, you are free now to head out. So the Queen nips into the kitchen to pick up all the sandwiches that she's made for all of the hundreds of people that they may encounter because she wants to make sure everybody knows about the tastiness of sandwiches. And she's, she's a bit of a feeder. Um, so she's made all the sandwiches for a picnic. So you pick up your bag of sandwich. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. To take with them. Yep. Oh, lordy. Okay, right. The first one's free. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants to make sure that everybody is aware of uh, Percy's special sauce. <laughs> Who would not want to be aware of Percy's special sauce? Anyway, are we uh, are we heading out into the wider city then? Yep. Uh, I, so. I believe Nick, you said about Jessamine first, didn't you? Uh, yes. Yeah, Jessamine. Mm-hmm. Okay. So heading out over to Jessamine. So. Are you going to pop into the Temple of Sevras as it's on the way, or That's do you just true. want to head to straight over to Jessamine's? We'll, we'll do Jessamine first. We um, can always pop in on the way back. Yeah, I think pop in on the way okay, back. Okay. And then we're, we're going to see Jessamine and then... Yeah, on the yeah. way back. Yeah. I agree. Cool. We're going to see Jessamine first. Mm-hmm. As you pass the entranceway to the Temple of Sevras, you do spot uh, Gary standing at the greeter's sort of podium and he's sort of from a distance he gives you a little sort of half-hearted wave Hello, Gary. Um, of recognition <laughs> um, wave, otherwise yep. yep you walk on past and you head to the villa indicated to you by Wakanga now the villa that you find in front of you is at something of a contrast to Wakanga's it looks fairly similar in the way that it is made up except that the theming is very different Whereas Wakanga's was kind of understated, here it seems that almost everything you can see is in some way themed off of serpents. There is a serpentine sort of theme running through it that is present on just about every medium you can see. 
The guards standing at the gates each have little uh, sort of serpent-headed helmets. The gates themselves, the bars, actually have little iron snakes sort of twisted through the bars. And on the path just past the gates, you can even see that there are little mosaics of serpents all across the path that's heading towards the villa. Oh, that's very clever. Have you seen all the snakes and serpents? Look at that. Look over there. Look, it's very arty. I like it. The guards hail you um, and ask your business. And when you presumably explain that you are after Jessamine, uh, one of them sort of pops inside to go and uh, inform her and asks you to wait. A little bit of a wet wait, because as I say, you know, it's it's raining. So, you know, you're slowly sort of soaking in the, uh, in the rain. Mm-hmm. But eventually the guard comes back and uh, tells you to turn right on the path and head to the pavilion. Okay. As you enter the gates, you can see even more sort of serpentine features of the villa. All the hedges, for example, have different serpentine looks to them. So there's, you know, topiary hedges that are shaped to look like coiled serpents. There is a fountain with a snake's head sort of jettisoning the water, even though obviously in this rain it's a little unnecessary to have water running at this point. Um, And the windows in the villa are all sort of shaped like serpent's eyes with stained glass that looks like the sort of slit irises. That you would see on snake's eyes. So the creator so let's go. Wouldn't this be wouldn't it be funny if, if she's um is it is Jasmine he or she? She. Uh Jasmine she. is a she. Yeah. Um a so it's, so so it's that, possibly one of those things me. you might have Yeah, so they are all merchant princes, but this seems to be kind of like in Game of Thrones, this is a genderless um yeah. n- uh, noun used here. Is it that, noun or pronoun? Um pro- yeah. Pro- anyway. Yeah, yeah uh, so um wouldn't it be funny if Jessamine was frightened of um, serpents and snakes? <laughs> I think it would be more um, unfortunate. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> then again, perhaps she's the merchant prince of snakes. Do we know what she is a merchant prince of? I was going to say, have any of you guys seen series of unfortunate events? Yes. Like the Netflix show? Yes. A couple of episodes. Um, I haven't seen, seen them all. A couple of episodes. Season? Maybe a season and a half? least season and a half yeah mm. so i think the like second episode there is a uh or it's, well technically i think it's the third episode of yeah. the new season there is a home that they go to that is literally covered in different like serpentine and reptile features because the guardian they're oh, going it's, it's to the reptile house isn't it yeah the reptile house that's the one yeah isn't that their uncle or something yeah it's like the, yeah it's their uncle great the, um yeah was that the same yeah. after no, that from the that first one. season or whatever it is and they he's got like a whole menagerie of Crazy. Of reptiles of various types. Yeah, yeah. That is literally that's that's the kind of thing I'm basing this off of. Is this kind of theme? Mm-hmm. <laughs> just to give uh, just, give a bit more of a view. Hold on, yeah. on uh, As we're walking, because I mean, we're surrounded by. I mean, it really is a, a an enormous profusion of snakes. Mm. Rana um, slows down slightly and taps Siliqui on the arm and says, um, uh, "Perhaps I should blend in." A little more and then he smiles at Siliqui and then he uses uh, a charge of wild shape to transform uh, into um, a brightly coloured snake uh, and then carries right. on slivering along um, you look amazing you, you do look great keeping pace with the rest of the party and just you know in case you want to know what snake um, I have various options I will be a giant poisonous snake uh, will I? No, that sounds scary. No, I'll be a constrictor snake. That does. Um, I'll be a constrictor. Oh yeah, because that's not scary at all. Um, I'll be. I'll be a constrictor snake. Um, Rihanna, we we rescued her, but we've not spoken to her yet. How are you meant to communicate with her if you're if you're a snake? She might not speak snake. She might just be obs- obsessed. She might try and take your skin. Rana shrugs, which is impressive because snakes don't have shoulders. <laughs> um, <laughs> And yet, somehow gives somehow sort of sort of rears up slightly, and then sort you of roll your just, eyes. Just sort of, sort of rolls the eyes slightly, and sort of vaguely, sort of like you know, sort of waves from side to side, like. Yeah. Um, and then just carries on slivering on. So basically, Rana is Rana is a constrictor snake. He's a sort of boa constrictor type, um, and he's just going to slither along next to Siliqui, just minding his own business because he thinks it's extremely amusing that everything's snake based, and he can be a snake. So he figures that that must be a good idea. If they like snakes, they must like him more, right? And you, he wants to make a good—he wants to make a good impression. <laughs> Just let him get on with it. It's okay. I 
Uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So Rana is a snake for the next hour. Okay. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. So as you continue along the path. You make your way up, and slowly a wooden pavilion comes into view. Um, this once again has even more snakes on the sort of wooden poles that keep up the roof. Um, and it's another sort of point of notice here that the actual villa itself, it's built in a similar sort of configuration to Wakanga's, but with a few bits that seem to be missing. So it seems to be a bit smaller than Wakanga's, but the grounds are proportionally larger than Wakanga's which is why you've not been able to see this pavilion from the gate but you sort of walked around a corner of snake hedges and then found yourself at this pavilion within the pavilion you see two women one Jessamine which you recognize as the woman that you saved from the temple Mm -hmm. last Mm -hmm. night Um, she is dressed in large billowing green robes with matching sort of bandages that cover up her arms bandages like fighting type bandages oh no she or from injuries they sort of look like um fighting bandages okay, yeah. it doesn't seem like they're like bandages as in she's you know um they're like <laughs> uh what's the word uh yeah it's not like she's broken her arms or something it's just that yeah they are just sort of wrapped round and part of the outfit uh-huh. it seems the other is a much younger girl who looks quite similar but has got a slightly sort of paler skin she has a hair done up in a braid at the back of her head. The two women are holding a couple of what look like sort of plant roots. And as you come up to the pavilion, Jessamine sort of glances up, sees you guys, but then continues talking to the girl. And you hear her say, and then as, as it penetrates the bloodstream, it starts finding all the little antibodies and all of those little proteins. And it starts just, just deconfiguring them. They start to flush out of the system. And then the victim's liver does the rest of the job. And when she's finished, she looks up to you and she says, Good morning. Would I know what that was in reference to? Uh, roll me a nature check. <laughs> Probably not. Oh, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Just seven. <laughs> seven. No. Yep. You've no idea what, what? they're talking about. As you guys enter, and Percival realises he has no idea what the hell they're talking about. As usual. As usual. Jessamine looks up to you and says, Good morning. I believe you are the party that I owe my life to. It's a pleasure to meet you. I am, of course, Jessamine. But I don't believe I have your names. Please to meet you, Jessamine. I'm, I'm Siliqui. And these are my, these are my um, comrades. Would you like me to introduce you, or do you want to introduce yourself? And uh, Percival just steps forward. My name is Percival Silverlight. You may have heard of me. I do get around. My dear Jasmine, if I may call you Jasmine, it's so good to properly meet you in a situation that isn't life-threatening. While he's talking, <laughs> Siliqui looks behind him at Sibby with his eyebrow like, hmm, we're going to all say our names. Jessamine listens to your little flair of introduction, Percival um, but her expression doesn't appear to change she just sort of looks at you with a fairly warm smile on her face although, mm, roll me an insight check she's she's not into dudes, she's into snakes (laughs) (laughs) Uh, it's a flat 16 so you can tell that while she's smiling warmly at you, the smile doesn't reach her Mm -hmm. eyes the eyes are still sort of... They're calculating. They're they are taking in <laughs> intently everything you're saying. Okay. Siliqui's kind of looking at her with an apologetic expression on her face with a smile. <laughs> so we have Siliqui, Percival, yourself, and she looks at you, Zibby. Hey. I'm Zibby. Reverend of Thor. A reverend. I hope you're feeling all right after last night. I can assure you I am feeling perfectly fine, thank you. She looks then at the snake and says, and from what I can recall, there were four of you there last night, which means that this... (laughs) (laughs) The, the, the The snake just goes... It, uh, in in response in response uh-huh. um rana rana kind of like puts his head up in the air and then he with his tail he points he points at his head with his tail and then basically attempts to say rana but just hisses so he points at himself and then hisses 
and then nods his head up and down, and then just <laughs> sort of sits there swaying, doing snaky things. This is my wonderful um, um, colleague. This is Rana. This is uh, the fourth one that you um, you talk of. Aye, he's he's not wearing his plaque. Rana, was it? Just um, as as an aside, I'd just like to point out. Um, I hadn't actually realised. Um, um, I, I can turn into this snake, but I hadn't realised that the, the the constrictor snake is a large beast. So it's actually freaking massive. It's it's it's. Are you looking over yeah, my shoulder? Are you kind of half draped? Yeah. <laughs> it is. It is freaking enormous. The constrictor snake. I looked at the hit points and it was 13 and I was just like, oh, it's like a normal thing. I've just realised it's large, which actually means it's like, it's like, it's like six metres long. <laughs> you're curled around the pavilion. You're not in the pavilion. You're just... <laughs> I mean, I, am, I, mean I, I don't know why a large beast only has 13 hit points, but yeah, I am, I am freaking massive. I could, I could swallow a water buffalo, literally, according to the size rating. Mm-hmm. The, the, uh, the insight that you got, Percival, um, you can tell as well that, interestingly, Jessamine is not phased by the yep. presence of the snake. The young girl next to her does look a little unnerved, I'm not going to lie, at this enormous snake. Um, but Jessamine herself is clearly very composed for somebody that's just watched a enormous snake slither around the corner with a group of people. So the queen quickly looks to her and says, oh, don't be alarmed, he's, um, he's, he's, he's friendly, he, he, he won't hurt you. He's a shape changer, dear. It's not to be feared. He is just as intelligent as the rest of us. Well, it depends on what you ask. I assume <laughs> you've met him. He's very good at something. <laughs> this, my friends, is my. Ah, uh, sod! I've forgotten the word. Um, daughter. Yeah, daughter is the word, but there was an adjective I was going to use in front of that, and I've just—it's my mind's gone blank. Offspring. Um, Dear. Useless. No. <laughs> no. Disappointing. Ah, adored. That was the word. Sorry, am I might. Am I projecting? I'm projecting. Aren't I? I'm sorry. Just ignore me. Sorry. I was going to say, do you need a hug, buddy? Or are you okay, Rana? Right? It's, it's just fine. It's fine. Carry on. It's tough Carry on. being a snake. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Jessamine uh, puts a puts a hand on her shoulder and says, "This is my adored daughter, Mesra. Say hello, Mesra." And she sort of looks to you and just says, "Hello." Just kind of a little shyly. Hello. Uh, Percival gives a little bow and a little flourish of his arm. Pleased to meet you, my dear. And the same to you. So the queen does a weird, almost curtsy, but not quite. Sort of little bob. <laughs> I got half it. Ah. I was just explaining to my daughter how this... And she holds up the roots that she was holding. And she says, uh, This wild root counters the poison in a person's blood. It's a very useful ingredient. The sap from the wild root is what does it but it can be either rubbed directly onto a wound or ingested it's quite oh, remarkable that sounds really useful uh, it sounds very useful it's, it's something that you uh, tend to have a lot of use for around here though toby just as an aside you know exactly what wild root is because of your background but you're a snake so you couldn't but, t- oh he can't tell us he can't anything, tell you anything. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'd, I'd like to point out, R- Rana responded in some detail, but all you heard was... Yeah. Um, <laughs> that yeah, is true. That, that, that is very true. true. Um, Rana is wishing he had a rattle on his tail so he could be a bit more percussive, but that's that's cool. He can he can change, do that next time. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I don't speak snake. It, yeah, I don't speak parcel tongue. <laughs> parcel tongue, um, yeah. <laughs> is that wild root yeah. um, <laughs> easy to come by around here at all? Not really. For myself, I have a few small cuttings growing in my personal greenhouse, but other than that, I have many of my workers forage it from the jungle when they can find uh, it. I did ask if it was something that she found a lot of use for around here. That depends on how many people upset me. I see. But come... We have business to discuss. Mesra, run along, find Ashara. It's time to practice maths. Uh, Mesra, uh, which, by the way, is spelt Y-N-E-Z-R-A. When she says to Mesra as well about the maths, um, Silicree looks at Mesra and pulls a slight face with a tongue out like, ugh, maths, in a kind of jokey way to Mesra. She smiles quite, again, quite sort of like, 
It's, it's a small, it's a little grin, and then it's almost immediately gone. She bows to her mother, bows to you, and uh, shuffles off to go and head back into the villa. And I'm just adding Mesra's uh, article to your named PCs oh, cool. folder so that you guys can see what she looks like. And Jessamine explains, as it says on this, that uh, Mesra is her only child and her tutors are ensuring that she has the knowledge necessary to take up her place as one of the merchant princes when she passes on. Um, can we ask um, what... Um I understand that all the merchant princes here um, have their own area of expertise. So can I ask what um, you're the merchant prince of? I mean, obviously, I can see what you're a fan of serpents, but um, what do you deal with and deal in, mainly? <laughs> you noticed my fascination with the serpents, then? I do. You've got a very um, creative eye as well with it. Was it not understated? <laughs> um, it's definitely not <laughs> understated, but um, as an artist myself, I, um, I do appreciate the, um, the attention to detail everywhere. They fascinate me. They're such lithe and strange creatures. But you asked what my business was as Merchant Prince. Mm -hmm. I, I am responsible for the trade of plants, poisons, and sanctions within the city. Um, sanctions being, like, punishments, is that right? I can see quite already that you are new to chalk. I am, yes. Sanctions are... Mm, removals of persons. Oh. Murder is, of course, illegal by law here. But a sanction can be bought by anyone. Oh. But they are all bought from me. Should somebody need to be removed from the population. Ah. Percival taps the side of his nose with his finger. Mm. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, Rana imitates Percy with the tip of his tail and pats the side of his, his snout <laughs> with the tip of his tail and then nods <laughs> sort of just behind Percy like he's slightly taking the piss. Jessamine looks looks towards uh, looks towards you, Rana, and says... Forgive me, but you're a constrictor snake, are you not? Rana bobs his head up and down. So no glands, then. <laughs> Rana, Rana tilts his head to one side and then tilts his head sort of back under to look back along the length of his body as though he's examining himself in some detail. Then looks back at Jasmine and then shakes his head from side to side. I can save you trouble, my boy. Constrictor snakes are not one of the most poisonous snakes. No, deadly in their own respect. And I must say, it's a very convincing shape change. And she sort of gives you a little nod. Rana, Rana does his best to sort of nod back. It sounds like an um, incredibly powerful position that you're in, especially with things like the sanctions. It's... Um, um, obviously, all the, all the um, merchant princes have their own area of what they work in, but yours sounds particularly powerful. I'm, um, I'm impressed. I'm no more powerful or less powerful than any other merchant prince. I have a vote in how we negotiate laws or negotiate new trades. I have my own monopoly separate from the other princes. Indeed, sanctions are a speciality of mine, but their price ensures that there are not many who seek them out. After all, it would be, frankly, unprofitable to have so many members of the city die. Especially if I was to say, make it cheap. A life, I think, is not cheap. No matter what someone's path in life is, it is not something that can be removed lightly even by the most cold-hearted assassins. Zippy, zip, uh, Zippy nods, but still looks disapproving. You disagree, Cleric? Oh no, don't get me wrong. I don't disagree that life is cheap in any way, shape or form. I just disagree with 
your line of business. Then perhaps we should discuss something a little more favourable. How about lunch? Have you eaten? (laughs) (laughs) That's always a happy topic. This takes Jessamyn by surprise. (laughs) I have these these nuts sandwiches. There is a nut. It's like like you're at the bus stop and it's somebody's utterly deranged aunt. (laughs) And they're just like, you know, the just bus is a bit at the bus like, stop, oh, just, oh, you know, pu- pulling out, you know, pulling out like, like Hazlitt, Hazlitt sandwiches that, you know, no one's made since like 1976. And, you know, like spam, spam sandwiches and stuff. And, you know, some bloke comes running down the road. He's like, Doreen, Doreen, get inside. You, you've missed your meds again. And he's sorry, sorry, sorry. And just sort of, you know, puts a blanket over her shoulders and hustles her back inside. Oh, my new friends <laughs> this okay so this is this is perhaps the first flicker of surprise that actually crosses jessamine's face because that did come out of nowhere everybody likes she's eating gonna talk about something completely different but yeah you mentioned sandwiches um uh she sort of puts up a hand and says i've not long had breakfast but thank you for the offer Nonetheless, <laughs> just a doggy well, and ham sandwich. If you get hungry, I've, I've made some of my of homemade, very nice sandwiches, um, which I would love to share with you all. I've made enough for everybody. You'll forgive me for saying this, I am sure, but given my particular line of work, and she sort of flicks her eyes towards Zibby as she says that, I rarely accept food or drink from anyone I don't know. Oh, I can totally understand that. But, um, I mean, you can test it if you like. I mean, I, 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 I will eat half a sandwich for you if you like to show you won't die. That would be no need. And she claps her hand. And it's surprising because even though it's not a very loud clap, uh, clearly somebody has been watching because a servant comes out from the villa and says, if you're so inclined as for me to try this, she looks to him and uh, indicates the sandwich that you're offering her and says... Uh, would you prefer meat or cheese? Meat, of course. Okay. <laughs> Sticks in the bag, finds the meat one. Yep. She indicates for the servant to taste the food before she has any. Presuming you guys have nothing to react to that because nobody's saying anything? Stand there a bit quiet, a bit awkward. Nope. Waiting. Okay. Yep. Fair enough. Rana, Rana <laughs> slithers up next to Siliqui and then glances between the sandwiches that are exchanging hands uh, <laughs> backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards and then looks up at Siliqui and then kind of looks back down again um, hoping that someone's going to notice that he he, 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 want, he wants a sandwich. Can, can snakes dribble? I don't, I don't think they can. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. think they have. <laughs> I, of the I, questions I, I thought I'd be asked today... <laughs> I, I'm not aware that they can. Um, <laughs> so yeah, Rana just sat there like a lap dog. Yeah. After a moment of awkward inspection, the servant actually does take your sandwich apart a little bit just to check that there's nothing like inside the sandwich that seems odd, like a scorpion, <laughs> like <laughs> or a scorpion, a or uh, perhaps uh, yeah, maybe perhaps some I don't know some some other irregularity that might cause suspicion. He takes a bite, a dragon. <laughs> <Boom>. <laughs> takes a bite. Um, and proclaims that it is good and that it does not appear to have any strange taste to it. Although he does note that the uh, the sauce that you've used is particularly odd, odd flavour. That's a special sauce. It's um, well, Percival wants to try and call it special sauce or something stupid, but um, it's better than gentleman's relish. Yes, it is a better name than that, Percival. You're right, but um, it's I find it it works very well with lots of types of food. It is a type of food, but it, it brings out the flavour. You might not have had it before. Silver lights, white goop. I don't know. Keep working on it, Percival. I will. <laughs> As you're sort of chatting this over, Jessamine then takes the sandwich, takes a bite herself, and Siliqui, make me a... Hmm. Oh, I feel like I'm on MasterChef and they're tasting my food. What's it going to, <laughs> What's it going to be? 
insight what do you think is it charisma intelligence wisdom i feel like poor hollywood has had me had a bite of my food <laughs> if, if you let's say let's say let's say wisdom let's see let's see if you've managed to uh, put a tomato natural 20 <laughs> boom touche oh, touche okay <laughs> And if it was, was it just strange I'm just going to go straight wisdom, because uh, I'm, I'm not entirely sure you can have proficiency with sandwich making, especially, unless you're actually like a chef. Well, it would be 20, um, natural 20, plus 3. Natural 20, plus 3, yep. This is yeah. clearly Jessamine... Blew her mind, didn't I? I blew her mind. <laughs> Jessamine is definitely impressed. You can see you can see she's very appreciative of the sandwich, now that she has actually had some. It's good, um, isn't it? It's nice. What is the special sauce and she does seem a little bit like wary as she says that it's um at the moment i'm um trying to come up with a name for it myself but it's um it was well, a secret recipe really but it, it does contain egg contains egg it does it's um blended egg interesting and a few other just bits and pieces around the kitchen secret recipe very interesting and where did you get this from and she takes another bite from her mother <laughs> She has special glands. I am. Um. <laughs> I don't know how this snake's talking. <laughs> and um, you suddenly all possess parcel tongue via yeah. mayonnaise. <laughs> we have powers. It's a well-known side effect. I, I yeah. like um, experimenting really with um, with different foods and, and making foods taste a bit nicer. Really, I am um, a bit vegetarian myself, so. Um, and a lot of places we go to um, uh, is often meat. And um, I want to try and make oh, things taste exciting. Still talking yes. about sandwiches. <laughs> okay. We're going to draw this to a close. Is there anything you guys actually want to ask her about the sandwiches? Because I know you were giving them to try as, like, a taster. But are you actually, like... Oh, no, I'm not trying is, to sod it to her at the moment. I'm just no? literally just trying to make friends. It's like a, a silicone's idea of... If you go to somebody's house, you take a cake or a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> For the sake of expediency, then, Jessamine is willing to eat the rest of the sandwich that you've given her. Oh, also, but refuses is to take any more. Did he no. come to the meeting? Sorry, as well? did Wakanga no. come? No, with no, Wakanga's no, Wakanga's back at the villa. Okay, He's I left him the sandwich. He's wrapped up in the villa. Then, yeah, cool, right? Uh, okay, all yeah. right. Um, <laughs> just, I needed him to try the sandwich. Stop talking important. about sandwiches yeah. now. Can we Sorry, stop? we moved on. Let's go. Okay. Right. Right. <laughs> uh, after after you've uh, you've presented these sandwiches and Jessamine's had them, as I say, she seems genuinely quite pleased with them, but you know won't accept more than just one taster. Mm -hmm. She then says, "The business that I was going to discuss is uh, well, the matter of my life, which I believe, technically speaking, I owe you. But seeing as how I'm not about to give you my life exactly." I expected that you'd want some sort of reward for your good deed. We didn't do it for a reward, but if you're offering... Well, um, it's not always about doing things for something in return. I mean, sometimes it's just nice to do things with other people. To be honest with you, we, none of us have a lot between us that um, we do need some help. Anything that you, you can help us with or, or give to us would be greatly accepted. But, um, you know, I don't like to think that... Um, that, that I would expect things. I think expecting things is just a bit rude. So, um, I think you'll find what we're saying is yes. I see it as being something worthy of reward, saving one of the merchant princes. Certainly, I believe it is something noteworthy, something that requires a special, special kind of recognition. I would offer you, perhaps, something of my wares, for indeed it is my livelihood and my daughter's livelihood that you have saved in saving me. That's very generous of you. I don't know if there's anybody that I want to kill at the moment. You don't know what wares she has. You don't assume that you know exactly what she has. <laughs> I had thought to myself that perhaps a life for a life would be fair. That, say, if you were to name a person that needed to be removed I could perhaps waive the fee for you in return this would not even need to be something that you would need to perhaps have a name now so is it something we could um, 
we could fall back on later if we don't have anybody in mind right now and is it something we could take a rain check on on that day in, in the if, if say in a few weeks or whatever does it have an expiry date that could be possible but in case as I suspect no. I think we usually do our own killing. I suspected that might be as much. And given, and she looks again to Zibby, your reaction to my line of work, I completely understand that you may not, may not perhaps be enticed by such an offer. And if that is the case, I can instead offer you some small trinkets. And she looks now to two servants that have walked out with two boxes. They stand either side of her. She gestures to one, and they open it up, and inside is a small pile of gemstones. They're pale orange. I think the kind of colour of that um, that tropical flaming sword that you guys put on the messenger feed. Oh, right. They're that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, hold on, I'll see if I can find cool. the picture. Yep. Um, uh, so these are citrine gems. Yeah. Um, so actually, yeah, because it will take me a little time to get that. But if you want to look that up yourselves, it is uh, it is spelt C I T R I N E, citrine gems. Mm-hmm. And she sort of gestures to them and says, each gem would fetch you around fifty gold pieces in the jewel market below. Ten of these, mm-hmm. five hundred gold pieces in total. Or you may keep them as gems, as I know some people will perhaps be requiring gems in their spell casting. Or perhaps simply you wish to have something very pretty to hold in your hand. But this payment in itself, this is something any merchant prince could give you. For myself, I have my own unique gift to offer. She indicates the second box. This box is opened and inside are a number of small vials. A couple of different sizes, but there are bear with me while I just count how many there are. There are seven vials in the case. Uh And she says these were brewed in my own distillery and each have their own unique traits that you may find useful. For instance, we have Assassin's Blood. One vial is lifted out to show you. We have Carrion Crawler Mucus. My favourite, the Drow Poison. A special concoction. Malice. Pale tincture. There is also serpent venom and truth serum, as you can probably guess. It's an ingested serum. They're poisoned for an hour, and the creature that fails this constitution saving throw cannot knowingly speak a lie, as if under the effect of a zone of truth spell. So, what Jessamine is offering you is, in addition to these gems, she is willing to offer you one of these vials, which is poisons that she herself has created. She has also intimated that you can forego this payment if you instead would like to take the life for a life option that she's offering, where you essentially will get a sanction that you can cash in later, as I don't think you guys have particularly, like, somebody that you want to have a sanction against just now. It's something you could potentially put in the bank. You can choose between the reward now or a reward in the future. And if you're taking the reward now, you can choose which poison you will take. Additionally, what I'd also like is a perception check from everyone, please. Uh, 17. 17, okay. 15. Mm-hmm. Uh, many. Dirty 20. <laughs> oh, dirty 20. Uh, 21. <gasps> Nice. Okay, so dirty 20, 21. Percival, you were 17? Uh, 15, I think and it was. S- oh, 15. And Siliqui, you were 17. 17. Right. Okay. That's so, bad rolls to change. Yeah, they're really good rolls. Um, oh, no, it was 16, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so 
that's Rana and Zibby. You guys notice that as Jessamine is showing this off, she does this thing where she waves her arm to um, indicate that each box um, should be opened. And you notice that as she raises her arm, there's an ever so slight wince on the face as she moves. It doesn't appear to be anything that particularly sets this off, but it looks like she's she experiences a moment of pain as she moves. You can do with that information what you will. Rana is aware of this, um, mm-hmm. but he's a snake, so he doesn't really care much. <laughs> well, Fair enough. Not too much, yeah. No, there's no food involved, so who cares? <laughs> Just <laughs> as an aside, I, I like the idea that whilst obviously druids retain their mental faculties when they change, I mm. I, I like the idea thematically that a sort of veneer of the character of what they've become is sort of cast over their their mind so i like the idea that if you're a bear you're a bit like Ra. i'm a bear and if you're a snake you're a bit like yeah i could do that but it's you know it's effort isn't it because they're lazy buggers aren't uh, they? so not i very lazy buggers unless that, they need to eat that's that's I don't know what happens when Rana becomes like really like out there animals like octopuses and stuff cuz I'm not sure how those how they act. <laughs> oh don't you worry. I can I can tell you how they act. Um <laughs> <laughs> I, I know they're super clever, but they've got short mm. memories. Uh Not really. No. Octopus can have very long memories. Yeah. Octopus can be yeah, really smart. Like they um they teach them to go through mazes and stuff and they can climb through mm. and do loads of stuff you know like how you get like bats well, and mazes and stuff they've done it with, with octopus well there is that that's that's an element of that's intrinsic learning of learning your way through a maze that's short-term memory actually octopus is long-term memory they can recognize people that they've met like over a year ago because octopus is actually a quite short-lived in most cases oh like, imagine how good it would be if octopuses lived in jungles and were arboreal how about that <laughs> Because they're perfectly <laughs> quick. They could swing through the trees <laughs> like a monkey, only it's an octopus. They could be uh, a gazebo uh, for their friends if it's a hot day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's just the octopus that's <laughs> cooking on the top. You can have calamari afterwards. <laughs> it's all right, you get him a little sun hat. You know, it'd be fine. <laughs> that, that classic druid, uh, that classic um, uh, druid subclass, uh, what wild shaped garden furniture. Um, <laughs> I mean, hell, look around you. There's serpents everywhere. Anyway, back on track. <laughs> Circle of the B and Q. You guys have a choice in front of you. Um, which would you like to go for? And Zibi, are you wanting to do anything with the information you've just had there? There is, and I'm trying to think of the best way to uh, best way to do it. Um, can I tell which arm it is? It's the interesting thing. It does appear to be both. Um, yeah, last night when she hit the zombie, mm-hmm. uh, she winced from doing something. Uh, what was it that she did just as she winced? So you remember that, yeah, she had a similar kind of um, cry out last night. She went to attack a zombie and she slashed it with a dagger and she cried out in pain, but it didn't seem like it was from the zombie itself attacking her. Where did she slash the zombie? Um, it was sort of across the torso, so kind of like from one hip up and across, up across to the collarbone. Something that would hurt if you moved either arm. Yeah. Um, Zibby's going to uh, pointedly look her in the eye mm-hmm. and say, Are you sure you're all right there, lassie? And look down. Well, he's not going to look at her chest because that, that's <laughs> really wrong. But, My eyes uh, are up here. Um, <laughs> exactly, e- exactly. Um, so I can't make a, an intimation of knowing where the and uh, and casually just sort of like draw his hand up across, like in a diagonal across his torso. Okay. She like subtly, casually, sort of. She looks at you and says, "I am perfectly fine." As you say this, you can sort of see she kind of widens her eyes slightly and her eyes flick to the servants. Right. As long as we both know you're fine then, lassie. But you were deciding what your reward would be. Um, so, yeah, I, uh, yeah, sort of truth serum. I would probably... Zibby would probably choose, uh, plump for the truth serum, to be honest. 
Mm. Rana mm. would choose whichever one has the coolest colour. <laughs> because he's a magpie. <laughs> so whichever one whichever one looks the best. So whichever one looks like Jägermeister, he's gonna go for that <laughs> one. Whichever one whichever one looks the coolest, he would automatically assume it's the best because it looks coolest. Oh, it's purple and sparkly. Yeah. Yeah, that's just have a quick look, see if it has a description of what the truth serum looks like. It does not, so it can look like whatever I want it to look like. Excellent. Um <laughs> Truth serum looks like white wine with gold uh, flecks of gold in it. It's fine. Uh, what's that? Yeah, oh, sure. Gold schlager. Gold schlager. Yeah, gold schlager. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. Uh, now I kind of imagine it like Veritas serum. From... Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Not not Jägermeister. Gold schlager. That's gold the one. Schlager. I yeah, gold schlager is the one you were thinking of. I, the thing yeah, is, yeah. I knew what you meant, even though I knew you said the wrong thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think truth. Personally, to my mind, truth serum. I like it sounding. It's because it's basically it's Veritas serum from the Harry Potter and Harry Potter. It's like colorless yeah. and completely odorless, which in many ways kind of makes sense because yeah. you just yeah. you, if you're trying to slip it to somebody, you don't want them to know that you've given it. No. Then again, you could just force it to them, and then it doesn't matter. Or, or we just say, "Drink this," and we know you're telling the truth. That also could be true. Well, you could do the whole thing, like what he does with the liquid luck as well, with the whole, yes, this is what you're having. We've given you this. Hang on, we've changed from murder hobos to Harry Potter. What? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) To be honest, it's it's remarkable how close the two are. (laughs) We're we're murder potters. No, that's Voldemort. Voldemort is the murder potter. Or Harry hobos. Harry hobos. Yeah, no, in in that case, we're Harry hobos. That's a kind of sweet, surely. What is, but it's not one of Dumbledore's favourites. Maybe, maybe it's one that um, you can get in uh, Weasley's. Um... Anyway, back to the. <laughs> 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 that's, that's, that's frog surprise. <laughs> Crunchy frog surprise. Yeah, uh, you don't want to know what's in it. Um... <laughs> Two steel bolts shoot out at the sides and impale your cheeks. As myself, mm-hmm. um, I would probably be looking at maybe some it's but i mean like it depends if we're looking at potentially wanting to sell um the vial of poison or whether we would want to be potentially using it i think using um, is i think i don't think any of them well because yeah, she's the, the only, uh, well she's the only person that buys poisons and things like that unless yeah, we're selling it on the black market is pretty freaking hardcore but that all that's going to do is it's like we don't want to be with a person for up to a week to see if they keep getting more and more damage it's you know so it's um you can threaten them with it but that one probably sell quite well i mean you could use it to get rid of somebody if you wanted to get rid of like incapacitate somebody it would essentially make them ill for a week is what is the way i sort of see it oh i suppose if you like secretly poison them and then know that yeah. you're going to do something a week later but if you wanted the result yeah. now you know well, like to uh, again big result, the thing is it's this is this is the kind of reward I I think Jessamine would offer. It's up to you guys how you yeah. would use whatever you take. And it's... the truth the truth theorem side in regards to using it could be potentially useful at some point if we get you know find uh, at some point that there's somebody that we need information from. Um, the the other stuff it's just a bit more damage really. It's not like significant mass damage necessarily. I think. Whilst Rana would be inclined to go for the shiniest one, uh, Rana, anything that involves I, the, the, truth serum, the truth serum has the widest application in terms of usefulness to the, for the party and quests and such, in yeah. my yeah. view. Yep. It's not just... Uh, yeah. It has, it has the potential to be... Well, in campaign terms, it could be extremely powerful depending upon when, who you gave it to, when, where, and how. And, you know, you could give it to somebody in a public forum... Then ask them a question that you that they would you would you know they would think they would normally lie to. They then reveal a great truth that you know brings down one of the merchant princes or something. You know, did you kill X Y Z? Ha ah, ha! Of course I did. Wait, what? Yeah. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things you could do. So I think the, the truth serum has the widest application. Hmm. Yeah, I think like as me, I think that or the uh, whatever it's called. You know, like basically having her knock someone off for you um, are the two greater value things, but um and silicone i think if it's somebody that ha- she's got a personal problem with she would want to do the killing herself um she wouldn't want to pay someone else to do it you know or to get someone else to do it for her i don't think that would be silicone's bag particularly mm, yeah so i think i'm hearing from this from a metagame perspective you're thinking it's most likely you'd go for the truth serum one then you go I for the truth think... serum and the gems over the sanction yeah yes. i think so yep 
Okay. But what what would uh, Persing want to do or whatever? I, I I think that that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think we want to hire out uh, the League of Assassins to kill somebody. I think we just want to. But as you or as Percy? Um, I'd, as as far as Percival's concerned, he he would probably try and do the job himself if he was going to do something like that. But he'd seduce them, wouldn't he? Of course he would. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell me the truth, or I'll read from my book for more time. Uh, <laughs> sat on a chair, walking around in circles. God no! Yeah. <laughs> Have a soul, man. What's wrong with you? Probably got a buckle or something in his shoe as well. I, only one shoe makes the noise when he walks. You know, just to be more irritating. <laughs> oh yeah, Zippy. Uh, Zippy, would pop round and have a quiet word. I mean, we, we kind of know what Zibby's quiet words are like anyway, so... Uh, <laughs> yep. Yes, exactly. <laughs> quiet word. <laughs> As uh, evidenced by um, trying to take on the whole of the Zentarium at first level. <laughs> now, what uh, what will you do in Portney and Zaro in general while you're staying in our, our lovely company? Well, um, you've got a lovely... Um, Sook and things there, which I still haven't fully um, looked around all of it. I, um, I, I imagine I will have a nice look around there, and um, I mean, we can get orders about the dinosaur racing. I mean, other than dinosaurs and shopping and making sandwiches, we are actually looking for the death curse. The death curse, indeed. You see here, you've piqued her interest. An eyebrow goes up, and she looks at you quite intensely. You're trying to deal with the death curse. That's right. Hey, that's why we're here. Well, just look into it, really, yeah, to see what's going on with it, and um, who's doing it, and what's happening. Jessamine seems to sort of withdraw slightly. She sort of she looks down, and you can see ever so slightly her lips are moving, as if she's sort of muttering, but like. It's a subconscious kind of thing. It's not. She's not actually muttering under her breath, but she seems to be just sort of like processing. So that's what he's up to. You're with Wakanga, aren't you? And she looks up to you. Well, with might be a bit strong. He's offered us some assistance. I to deal with this death curse. I. I see. And has he told you? About the other groups he's tried to send? Well. That has been mentioned in passing, eh? Did you happen to know any more? Sadly, no. Uh, is it Group C? Third group? I still maintain... We're indeed Group C, I, yes. I still maintain we're absolutely at least a B. <laughs> B minus. <laughs> Speak for yourself, big man. Jessamine, uh... Yasmin tells you that, no, I do not know any more of this death curse, I'm afraid. But I have noticed Wakanga meeting with and treating with some strange, strange fellows of late. People he sent into the jungle. And it seems that you are the most recent recruits for the mission. And now I know what he has been doing. I thank you for that information. Is there a problem with you knowing this at all? Is there, um, do you have any issues with the, with the death curse? Or do you... I mean, what's your views on it? I'm going to let the perception checks you did before stand. Okay. However, Rana and Zibi, you again notice that as Siliqui says that, she absentmindedly touches her arm. Mm-hmm. Okay. It seems, it seems again, it seems unconscious. She doesn't seem to be, you know, doing it to sort of send a message or anything. It's just as she sort of sat there, she just puts her hand on one of her arms. And she says to Siliqui, You could say that. The Death Curse is a threat many of my fellow princes aren't taking very seriously. What do you know of it so far? Well, we know it doesn't make you very well. Uh, we're actually going to be speaking with one of your other princes this uh, for lunch. You got oh, the really? sandwiches before him, though. I'm gratified to know that. <laughs> which uh, which merchant prince are you meeting with? 
Jobel. <laughs> hey, just speak me Jeebles. Jeebles, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, you'll certainly need to meet with uh, Jobel if you are going into the jungle. His guides are the best in the city, and you'll need them if you're not to get lost in the jungles. Hey, well, we have our own guide, but uh, more help is always useful. Your own guide? Aye. Oh, that'll be the snake just here. Young, young sneaky boy here. Ah. Rana, Rana sort of spirals round like a corkscrew, in kind of like if a snake could do a twirl in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, that's How, what it would do. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, well, like, if so, yeah, Z- yeah. Z- yeah. Z- 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 does a, a silent little clap at least. <laughs> Zippy Z- Z- catches Siliqui's eye and raises his eyebrow. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many eyebrow raisings. Anyway, um, uh, Jessamine sort of nods to Rana again in appreciation and says, So, I take it, have you been to the jungle then already? Or is this an expedition planned? We've only really dipped our toe in. We only went in there briefly. We haven't gone very far yet. And, um... We've come back to be better equipped. I can tell you this for free. If you're meeting with Jobel, be wary of telling him that you didn't use one of his guides. He gets a little touchy when he's, frankly, cheated out of business. I mean, in many ways, we all are here in... What means our each merchant prince has their own speciality, and I hopefully he um, would be very wary about it. I mean, to be honest, um, Ron is amazing at so many things, um, but we pretty much just got lost. It's it wasn't much of a guide. Then hopefully, Joba won't be too pissed off. <laughs> I will say this: if he is not, then I can warn you that he will most assuredly try to get you in his employ, Rana. And I would think carefully on how you would respond to such an offer. Rana, do you particularly react to her saying that to you? Rana reacts. Rana, I think at this point, because everyone's doing lots of talking, I think Rana is not so dim-witted that he doesn't understand that occasionally human words are needed. Um, So Rana will Mm. end his wild form shape um, and... Uh, sort of meld back into his human shape. And in response, uh, Rana just sort of shrugs uh, and says, uh, um, if Rana does not appear to be a man, then Rana cannot appear to be a guide. Hmm. You're saying you would mislead Jopal into thinking you're not their guide? Rana shrugs again and says if companions and emotions towards the party he says go to meet Jobel and have a pet monkey or a pet dog hmm. who is Jobel to comment oh I've always wanted a pet dog I've never had the opportunity can I choose a colour <laughs> Rana, Rana looks a bit put out by this this is, of course, your choice as to how you wish to proceed. I simply wish to advise and to let you know that while there are pros and cons to everything, there are also certain benefits and certain downsides that would be associated with taking employee with Jobel. I'm not so sure refusing him that in the long term would be wise Rana looks sort of quite uh, quite sort of belligerent at this um, and says I and my people have lived in the jungle have lived outside the city walls since before there was a city my life and the life of my people are our own I will not be told what to do in this regard um, quite firmly. And quite right, too. Please do not misunderstand me, Rana. I do not wish to 
impose upon you at all. I just simply wish to offer what advice I can give. As I say, it is your life to lead. Rana nods and thanks her for the advice um, and says each must make their own choices. And he says if Jobel chooses to press the issue, then the consequences will be the consequences. And then Rana just shrugs him and settles back as though that's that's the end of the matter. Yeah, I know the um, the death curse is a bit of a touchy subject, but um, other than the other prince is not taking it very seriously. I mean, is there anything else you could tell us about it that might help us on our search? Only in to tell you that the Temple of Severas, the Temple of Temora, have failed to provide more information on the subject. But who knows? Perhaps you'll be more lucky. I certainly would urge you, should you learn anything more, to convey your news to me. I know that that may be asking much, but I would pay handsomely for news of this death curse and what knowledge you might find of its source, or even to hear of it being defeated if a curse can be defeated oh we shall see what we can do very well we will um my apologies but there is just one last thing of course um are you aware of a mr lyric dashlin at this jessamine i sort of it's a little chuckle that she has and she says indeed I know, Mr. Dashland. What of him? Well, we have been uh, tasked by Lord Dashlin to gather some support for uh, the Order of the Gauntlet, which uh, I'm sure you know. Their uh, their camp, uh, Camp of Vengeance, I believe. Used to be Camp Righteous. Apparently they actually have some uh, some deep issues in the jungle. The Order of the Gauntlet? Those are the chaps. They're still alive? And... What... Help... Would you hope to find? Well, I, I believe they're wanting to actually set up some form of a, uh, a supply chain. I see. That explains why Lerick has recently contacted us at Golden Throne. Presumably this matter is what he wishes to discuss with us. I expect so. Hmm. Well, certainly he would need the help of the merchant princes to set up such a supply chain, but what do you ask me for? Well, we are talking to all of the merchant princes about various things, such as perhaps this death curse and anything that people may be able to help us with but this is also one of the things we got in our top pocket just to help somebody else I see well I'm afraid for myself there isn't much that I can offer in the way of aid to Camp Vengeance such a supply chain you understand is not something that we necessarily would have committed to as a city which merchant prince would need to individually provide what they can provide for the order and as I've said the most useful thing I can think of would be the plants that I harvest from the jungles but they're in short supply in general you see, I do understand that they are in short supply, but they are out there obviously trying to quell this horrendous undead problem. Indeed they are. Only yesterday were we there protecting the throat, <laughs> protecting you. Surely, if there is less undead in general, then that's only good for all of us. I believe you have a point, Mr. Silverlight. 
But again, I reiterate that from myself, the most I can offer is a limited selection of herbs and knowledge that I can send their way. So what she was saying was that she would have some additional herbs, but the trouble is that the plant side of things isn't really the, her biggest profit. What she would need is some sort of supply of, like, decent supply of the med uh, medicinal um, the medicinal herbs and uh, plant <laughs> stuff. Sorry, Very my brain's gone sorts. dead. Yeah. Um, that is sort of available from, yeah, that's sort of avail available from the jungle. Port Nianzaru is not built to have, like, a lot of greeneries and a lot sure. of uh, greenhouses growing, like, vegetation. There is not much in the way of lasting supplies that I can send them. For instance, while I would send perhaps some of my poisons to them, I am under the impression that the undead do not react to poison. No, but the uh, camp that they're in, if you could call it that, um, not doing too well with things like disease... Perhaps there's something else. Uh, well, disease, everything really, isn't it? They, um, they've tried to make it um, less penetrable, but they, um, they really are low on all supplies. Perhaps medicines. Things to combat disease and stupidity. I don't know. For medicines? I can tell you that for medicines, you will want to be speaking to Quaith. She is the merchant prince of plants... Aren't you the of, merchant prince sorry, of plants? Of food? <laughs> yes. <laughs> she, she is indeed, yes. Sorry, I got that wrong. Um, no, Quaith is responsible for things like uh, the sort of edibles, essentially. So she's got most of the, like, food mm -hmm. and um, drink in and insect yeah. repellent. Um, um, all, all of the cannabinoid-related brownies <laughs> are made. All of them. <laughs> all of the edibles. Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, num num. She's got like an all linen suit with a Hawaiian shirt underneath and a fedora. Totally, but like she's also got people in the background with stacks of money. Like <laughs> oh, that's not useful. Hang on, I need to get the actual book. Um, oh, and again, it's at the bottom of the damn pile. It's amazing how okay, it does. Huh? Right. So Quaith deals in yeah. So I pretty much had it down. It's so it's uh, she deals in fruit, wine, ale, tedge, which is beer. Oil, perfume, and insect repellent. But she, but she would deal with medicines as well. It's kind of between her and Wakanga for healing stuff, because Wakanga has magic and sort of all the like healing potions and stuff like that. Whereas Quaith has the food, and the insect repellent would mm. be something that would definitely help them with things like diseases. As they've got some healers there anyway. I suppose if they've got the insect repellent. The people that they do heal, they can then give the insect repellent too to stop them getting ill again, while they then concentrate on gradually getting the others better. So what if uh, we found some plants, you know, the ones that you need? Could you show Rana what, what you need if we come across anything like this? Jasmine, you know, appreciates that, and obviously if you guys collect stuff while you're out and bring it back, that'll be fine. But it won't really be a large enough supply to actually supply the camp, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. like the camp can go and forage stuff for itself as well but you really need some sort of source like a tribe of indigenous people who live in the jungle and know what the herbs are Aha! <laughs> one of the players knows how to drink the water I'm leading them to um, uh, <laughs> uh, yes so yeah that is one potential idea that you could have there is you could try and persuade we should tribe. persuade the goblins <laughs> We should persuade the goblins. <laughs> Wrong direction, Rana, right. but yeah, I suppose that would... I will pay the goblins yeah, would, in mayonnaise I, yeah. and sandwiches for them to do our bidding of <laughs> finding all these herbs. 